check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts, arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Hello and welcome to The Debrief, your podcast for Detroit concerts, comedy, plays, food, drink, and more. It is Tuesday, July 30th, 2019. It's the end of July. Can you believe it? I really can't. Uh, And I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. Uh, Here's the way it works. If you've never listened to the podcast, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about because I'm not from the Detroit area. (laughs) And I know exactly what I'm talking about all the time because I'm a native. Well, you just pretend like you do. Exactly. You put on airs. Fake it till you make it. Right. (laughs) I'm going to try that. Uh, (laughs) Look, here's what we're talking about on today's podcast. The Democratic debate is coming to Detroit. We've got 20 candidates. They couldn't even fit it in one night. Wild. So 10 candidates on Tuesday night, 10 candidates on Wednesday night. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about Big Sean's brand new video out. And uh, the Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge. I mentioned this a couple of times while we were off, when we were doing our sort of greatest hits episodes over the last couple of weeks. I actually took it. Oh, you did it yourself. I did. Oh, it's, okay. And I'll tell you how it's working I thought for you me. were just pretending. No, I, cool. it's, re- it's a real thing. Cool, cool. On Friday, you're going to want to tune in to hear our interview with Chef Genevieve Vang of Bangkok 96. She's got the one in Dearborn and then down at the Detroit Shipping Company. Uh, And of course, we have an email list. Here's the deal. We talk about a lot of stuff on this podcast. I know it's hard to keep track of it all. If you want a list of everything that we're talking about with links. So if you hear something, you're like, I want to know more about that. I want to go to that. All you have to do is go to our website. It is thedebriefdetroit.com. And while you're there, sign up for the email list. We'll send you a list of links every week. And you can just text the word Detroit to 444-999 from your phone and get it that way as well. Plus, we've launched Michigan Podcast Productions. We are helping local arts and entertainment organizations launch their own podcasts. So if you've been thinking about launching a podcast, whether you are a theater, whether you're a restaurant, whether you're a museum, please go to michiganpodcastproductions.com. And uh, if that's something you want us to help you do, we can do it. Uh, look, hey, I want to mention one other thing, because like I said, we've been gone for a little bit here. Yeah, we've been, a little you know, hiatus. Yeah, yeah. The, the interviews that you heard over the last couple of weeks, the technical term is they were in the can. Exactly. Right. I think that's yes. the uh, way uh, ahead of the game. Something happened that I noticed. Uh, and I, I don't know if you noticed because this was a sports thing and neither of us are big sports fans, mm-hmm. but it was also a big thing in the radio world. Uh, this ESPN broadcaster, uh, Dan Lebetard, uh, back on July 18th, uh, basically criticized ESPN, who he works for, uh, and came out and said, uh, look, you know, we don't talk about politics here at ESPN. And it's something that we avoid as a topic, which I think a lot of companies are avoiding these Absolutely. days. Yep, uh, yep. And, and they said, if we do talk about it, we always have to find the sports angle on it. To lead into you know, it. We need a coach who mm-hmm. tees off on something that's going on as a political issue or or something like that. He actually said, you know, we use these players as basically meat guards to let, to let <sighs> us go in and talk about this stuff. Right. And, and that's true here. Uh, on this podcast, I don't feel like I'm giving away any secret sauce to say when we sit down and plan out this show, every segment, every episode, we say it has to, there has to be a Detroit angle and there has to be a Detroit arts and entertainment angle because that's what the show is about. That's what we do. That's our mission. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So he mentioned in his rant, Jamel Hill. Ah. who we have talked about on this podcast. Yes. And I know this is a stretch, but we've talked about, you know, Jamel Hill on this podcast before. So she's going to be my way in to talk about this. But he, he oh, basically okay. went off and said, this is about a week and a half ago because the political discourse in this country has turned racial. It has turned divisive. Ugly. It has turned ugly. And he said ESPN is afraid to say anything about it. And, and I think something needs to be said about it. Instead of hiding from it. Instead yeah. of hiding from mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think anybody who listens to this podcast knows that we are about arts and entertainment and we are about different things that are going on and different ways of expressing things and that we hold as a value. I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you would agree with this, that we hold diversity as a very important value. In and, very and high regard, yes. In very yeah. high regard on yes. this podcast. And we don't need to get into all the, the nitty gritty about what's going on nationally and politically, but... I think that's really important. I think I think it's important to say. I agree. I uh, agree. And we want to represent the extremely varied voices that are in Detroit. Yeah, uh, because there's a lot here. Mm-hmm. There, there's a lot of different voices. So uh, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but I do feel like it needs to be said and it needs to be made. So uh, with that, let's meet today's guest co-host. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Great. 
Welcome. We have a, uh, a fellow podcaster Yay. who is joining us today. Very excited about this. Uh, Yasmin Kadu is the co-host of the Dearborn Girl podcast. It just launched. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Welcome. you for having me. Now, you are one half of the podcast. I You've got am, a co-host I as am. well. Yes, I do. Uh, Rima Fadlala is my co-host and co-founder of Dearborn Girl. So tell us a little bit about the podcast. What's it all about? So Dearborn Girl chronicles the stories of Arab and or Muslim women from the Dearborn community. So we talk about a range of topics and discussions, and we just finished actually our first season, um, and we have a lot in store. So why, give me an example of a topic that you or may have covered on one of these issues. Or the, yeah. Um, so our first episode, I guess I'll give you the rundown of our first one, um, was the first woman ever from Fortson High School. I'm sorry, the first person ever from Fortson High School to attend Harvard. So wow, um, and yeah. Fortson's an old school. Yeah. So all right, here's my here's my new guy card here. Yes, yeah. I don't I don't know what. Fortson so Fortson is. Mm -hmm. High School is the largest high school in Dearborn, and it's been around since the night like early 1900s. It was the first million dollar high school in the entire country, and um, she's the first person ever to go to Harvard. So wow. that just kind of speaks volumes on living in a community where maybe that type of feeling like you belong in an Ivy League is not something that people feel like often. So it was one of those things where people, now that she went, she went actually six years ago. She's only a year older than me. Mm -hmm. And um, now three girls this year are going to Harvard. Really? And all f yeah. So it's been uh, every single year, there's been more Increase. people people uh, applying to Ivy Leagues. And kind of it, it just kind of shows representation matters. And that's kind of the entire gist of our podcast is that representation and hearing stories of women that not only went through similar things um, or similar struggles, but feeling like you're connected to these people you've never even met. And that's something that we've been bringing to our community. And it's been a very interesting, moving experience. So in addition to those types of interviews where it's one-on-one, -on -one, we do these table talk discussions where there's different topics and we'll just discuss them. So the last episode, which um, released today, was about sexual harassment. So it was myself, um, interviewing three other women and we just kind of sat and talked about sexual harassment and how it uniquely affects our community. And obviously it's not sexual harassment and any of these topics are not something that's a uniquely Dearborn problem. This is a global issue and most of the issues are global issues, but we talk about specifically from a very Dearborn lens and how it affects our communities. So, Can I ask, when you use that word Dearborn? Yes. Uh, that's a shorthand for something in a lot the of ways. The shorthand for the Arab Muslim community. So when you think of Dearborn, most people think of the Arab Muslim community in it. Um, it's not to say that that's not Dearborn. Dearborn doesn't have any other people that live there, but it's just kind of the stereotype. And we found that before people didn't want to ascribe to anything related to Dearborn because um, they just didn't feel proud of their identities. So now that we've introduced this space, we found that people are a little bit more receptive to it and we're giving them permission to be proud of their identities and that, that identity being the Arab Muslim identity. Let me ask a, a dumb question here uh, because I know that when we've had guests on, for example, from the uh, Arab American Museum, you know, the word Arab and the word Muslim are not interchangeable. No. Correct. So when you say Arab Muslim, does that mean Arab, Arab and, or Arab and? And, and mm -hmm. or. So to be on the show or it's, um, to share your story, you have to be Arab and or Muslim. So you can okay. be, you yeah, you can be one. Or the other. other or or both. both. Yeah. Yes. I'm both. But um, you, we've definitely, I think we've had uh, actually only both, I want to say. Okay. But the community is definitely, um, there's definitely the, there's both. the separates too. So you're sort of playing off a stereotype, but also giving it a new look, a new perspective and turning it maybe from some negativity into a positive identity. Yeah. So we found that being called a Dearborn girl is never anything people wanted to be called. Right. And, and this is something even people to the age of my grandmother didn't want to be called. A, I don't want to be called a Dearborn girl. But then um, now we're just kind of showing everybody that to be a Dearborn girl isn't a single facet. There isn't one facet that you can ascribe to this identity. And it's just something that's so complex and so 
relatable too. And my favorite thing to say is uh, I love being in a community, being a part of a community where nobody f- feeling like I fit in where nobody fits in. And that's kind of how everybody feels too, because it, it's a large city that opera- operates like a small town. So everybody, it's so close knit and so strong, but at the same time, nobody necessarily fits into like a single box. Right, right, right. What is the relationship and again, this is something because I'm not from here, between Dearborn and Detroit. I mean, is it like Boston and New York where you feel overshadowed and or is it? Oh, gosh, I feel like they're just so different. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, we're very close. We border Detroit. Um, you literally drive like two minutes. But I don't mean physically. I mean, oh, I mean, physically. I mean oh, mentally. I mean, like how, how do Dearborn and... people think about the city of Detroit? Um. I, like is it a is it a big deal if you go into Detroit? Like oh my gosh, I can't believe you're you're going all the way there, even though it's not five really, minutes up the road. No. Not now. I think maybe in the past a little bit of what you're talking about. Maybe I mean at a time when nobody really went to Detroit. Right. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, but I think a lot of people in Dearborn work in Detroit, or they have businesses mm-hmm. in Detroit. I know a lot of people that have businesses in Detroit. Um, so definitely, like going back and forth. I, the communities are so different, um, but they're both communities of color. So right. then again, it, there's a lot of similarities, but then there's also the dynamic of racism between both communities. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then there's also the fact that like Hamtramck literally sits inside of Detroit and like Hamtramck's not part of the Dearborn community, but it's a large Yemeni population. So I feel like a lot of people do still like that are the Yemeni community in Hamtramck, like they have a completely different identity as far as like the city goes, but they do sort of like ascribe to Dearborn and come to Dearborn and for like certain the, things. The, the Metro something. Detroit Arab community as a whole, Arab Muslim community as a whole is very tight knit. So um, I feel like there's a lot of like intermingling with that. But yeah, the community, they're, it's, they're very different. So I don't, I've never really thought to compare the two. Hmm. Yeah. How's that for your lesson? <laughs> I, I, I learn a lot. I, I know very little. I learn yeah. a lot. I yeah. try. <laughs> uh, so people can find the podcast. And what fascinates me about this is, you know, even though podcasts are booming, this is probably an area where there are not a lot of podcasts that are delving into this topic, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, we are the only of our kind. And I didn't realize, I kind of didn't even, I, we knew that and we knew that it was a thing, but Fox Detroit did a, a piece on us and they like introduced us like the only podcast of its kind. And we were just like, yeah, we actually are. And so um, that realization has been very interesting too, because when you aren't doing anything somebody else is doing, that we have no competition. Like we have, no, there's no point of reference where people can like compare us. Yeah. Um, so that's been an interesting thing too, because we're just kind of, like fighting against ourselves but it's also it's like a good and bad thing right right yeah it's one of those things that i'm thinking to myself why didn't someone do this sooner mm-hmm. you know Definitely. it's sort of surprising and then and and very impressive that you did your research and are like let's do this and there's really no precedent yeah it's one of those things though where we, we are our like our audience our listeners we, we are Dearborn girls. So right. it's one of those things where nobody knows what we need besides ourselves. So it was a very, very easy thing to kind of, th- not an easy thing to think about, but it was an easy thing to kind of like, okay, like we have just this playground to that and, we know how and to And probably operate. these are the stories we want to hear. Exactly. And, and these are exactly. who we want to talk to. Yeah. And I mean, it's community building too. So it's not just the Yasmin and Rima show where we just decide everything. Obviously, we listen to every single piece of feedback we get. And doesn't mean we always implement it all, but it's definitely... Definitely things we take into consideration. Mm-hmm. We, we're podcasters ourselves. We know how hard this is to do. But do you get a sense of where your listeners are? Is it primarily people in Dearborn or are you hearing from people yeah, in other it's places? Yeah, it's crazy because um, we have listeners in over 35 different countries. Um, but our listeners are mostly in Dearborn, majority in Dearborn, but we do have a strong, uh, Arab American presence, like outside of Dearborn too, which is great because you hear people saying that, um, their stories are very relatable. And just because they're from Dearborn doesn't mean that other people can't relate to. So it's been cool. So, um, we keep saying as far as like Arab American Muslim stories go, nobody should be telling our stories, the Arab American narrative or the Muslim American narrative besides Dearborn. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say just the Muslim American, but 
mostly the Arab American narrative, um, besides Dearborn. So it's nice to hear from other Arab Americans outside of Dearborn that this is really speaking to them and mm-hmm. they're finding them to be very relatable. That's great. Cool. Well, Yasmin, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, thank people you. can find the podcast, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, wherever they Spotify, find the podcast, all ins- the usual our places. Our Instagram is dearborn.girl. Cool. Perfect. Well, look, hang out. Have a good time. Thanks. This is the D. All right, Becky, let's talk about music news. Sure thing. So I went to one of my favorite events over the weekend, the Mopop Music Festival. It was super. And a few local bands were on the lineup uh, this year. So there was 22 acts and three Detroit bands, the Messenger Birds, Sienna Liggins, and the Doozers. And then Lizzo was there, which I think was the standout performance of the entire festival. She was incredible. She was, of course, born in Detroit. And she... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, d- d- look, I get it. She's a superstar. We want to claim her, but... Well, no, listen to what she said. Okay, so what did she say? I have not heard it from her directly until yes. now. So her performance included a lot of engagement with the crowd. I mean, she's a huge dancer, huge body positivity advocate, just great spirit. And she she took time to introduce her family that was there in the audience, said, you know, I was born at Hutzel Hospital, raised a bit in Gross Point. She talked about her mom, her dad, her, you know, she was very into it. That Detroit means a lot to her. But I guarantee you this is the first time she's ever given that speech. I don't know. She may have said something similar to St. Andrews. I was born in Binghamton, New York. I grew up there until I was six. And if you ask me, I'm a Californian. Well, yeah. Because that's that's where my... Her pivotal years were in Houston, Texas. Right. But if I went on tour and I stopped in Binghamton, New York, you bet I'd milk it for all it was worth. I don't, I, okay, you're more cynical than me. <laughs> I'm much more, I, always, you? always. Yeah, but I feel like people, like, I'm not, I'm from Dearborn, I'm not from Detroit, so I feel like people that are from Detroit have this just deep connection to the city, and maybe even being a, an artist and a musician, she's kind of like, oh yeah, like Detroit is like home to all of these music legends, and this is where like I have this deep connection. So I don't know, I don't necessarily think I would cut her off right away like i don't know enough about lizzo to know her if she's being real but i I, i'd give her the benefit of the doubt it seemed pretty sincere i mean she was getting teary-eyed it was very much like i never dreamed this would happen to me that's beautiful and you know her father's passed away and she's like if he would be so proud of me, you know. So she, she was like, "You guys, this means a lot to me to be here." And, and that's Plus, it's all, her biggest that, show. That's all legit, and that's all on right. The level. Plus, it was her biggest show by far right. in Detroit. So she just knocked it out of the park, to be honest with you. And she was like, "You know, I just up here. I like making myself feel better. I like, pe- I like to make people feel better." Mm-hmm. And and it was a lot of love. So yes, me. You said, you know, I'm from Dearborn. I'm not from Detroit. Yeah. Uh, there is this thing where. You know, when somebody from Troy is talking to somebody from Miami and the person from Miami mm-hmm. says, where are you from? Mm-hmm. You say Detroit mm-hmm. because nobody knows where Troy, Troy is. Troy, Michigan. Yeah. What do you do if you're from Dearborn in that situation? I always say I'm from, every single time I say I'm from Dearborn because people do know Dearborn, but yes. they have these negative stereotypes of Dearborn. And I always like to be that person that's like, no, like you have all of these things in your head, but look at me. Like Mm -hmm. I'm an actual person. And if you have questions, by all means, ask. Um, I always think it's funny when people do that where I I get it if your city is not like well known. But for the person that lives in Troy that doesn't necessarily ever go to Detroit, too, it's kind of like taking claim over the city where I would if I was a Detroiter, I would probably get really annoyed. Well, they do. They do. And I think it's a fair weather fan type of situation because you know, in past years, you were from Troy. You wouldn't say you were from Detroit, but now that it's like cool and hip and sure. in the New York Times, you're going to be like, yeah. I'm what do you think people said before? If you were from Troy, like, what would you say before? I like, think people would say, Michigan. I, yeah, I'm Michigan. from Michigan outside of the Detroit area or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or they might say Metro Detroit or a suburb of or, or just hold up their palm and, and point, point yeah, to the hand. That, yeah. It took yeah. me a long time so to get used to that. I think it's changed. Yeah, I think it's changed. Well, but yeah, we saw some great acts at Mopop. I just think it was great. And a few of the artists really pointed out how happy they were to be in Detroit. Again, of course, you know, you don't know how sincere that is, but it came across really well. It was very good vibes. And a lot of the artists said how much they like playing on the waterfront, that, that that's not 
It is a cool place to play. It's a really good venue. So anyways. Uh, Speaking of cool places to play, uh, you know, if you're a Lizzo fan, it just came out, just dropped. Uh, She did an NPR, Tiny Desk concert. Oh, I love those. Those are the best. They are the best. I'm going to check hers out. I bet it'll be wonderful. Yeah. She's so talented. But 33,000 people go to Mopap, right? It's two days. It's been for years. Um, There's no overlapping set times, which I super enjoy because if you have FOMO and you want to see everybody you can totally do that there so it's been uh, the last five years has been at West Riverfront Park but they got to find a new home because that park is being uh, renovated to the tune of 55 million dollars starts next year going to be renamed the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Centennial Park you know, not his, Aretha Franklin well maybe it'll change but Ralph put up the his foundation and put up the big big money so um, it'll reopen in 2022 so the buzz is where's it going to be um, the AEG who puts on Mopop says the new locale it's not public yet but they say it will meet the goal of staying downtown on the river so cool. <laughs> hopefully Good stuff. So Big Sean has a, a couple new singles out. I don't know if you, you saw that. He released them last week, which coincided with Detroit's birthday. So kind of like Big Sean's present to the city, a couple new songs. And today, well, yesterday, because we're recording this Monday, but you'll hear this Tuesday. So yesterday, he released the video for Single Again. So we all sat here and watched it together. What did you guys we think? Drake, or sorry, why did I say? Um, Big Sean is very, very dramatic. <laughs> That's what I got from it. Um, it's kind no, of a I'm, movie. I'm a huge Big Sean fan. I, I'm not going to be a hater right now. Um, actually, I was at the Foundation Hotel a couple months ago, and he walked right by. Oh. And so I'm friends with the, one of the girls that does the valley, and she's like, you know, Big Sean just walked right by you. And I was like, I was on my phone. I was not paying attention. Oh. But, like, you hear Big Sean instances a lot in uh, Detroit. And actually, when he was filming that video, um, I, I worked at the Guardian building, and I, I left my job. And the, literally the day after my last day, he was filming the music video downtown and I'm like of course the day yeah you could have been in it could have been in it but yeah uh, well a lot of Detroiters are in it he's all local people uh director the actors you know shot fully in Detroit in neighborhoods um there's a point like where you said not far from the Guardian building you can see the Renson in the background he's standing on top of a WDIV truck so it's it's definitely a story it's a little movie uh for the song single again and and um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's interesting, and so it's sort of sort of takes on social media and how that sways people, right? So it depicts Big Sean in the middle of this cheating scandal. Did he or didn't he? And they kind of like say he's on trial, basically. And people have no evidence whatsoever. They just go off the tweets and the Instagram posts and the Facebook posts and sort of take sides. And in the video, this couple literally breaks up because one of them thinks he did it and one thinks he did not. I get in lots of fights on social media. Like I totally... You're big on that. I you know what? You know, I don't I know why. Away. Like every two months, like clockwork, I'm just like, it's been a while. I'm going to pick a fight. <laughs> Ugh, <some laughs> but political. It's, but it's, yeah. yeah, but it's never, it's never taking sides in a you couple just like stuff have you ever actually a... seen that like two like a couple yeah get, i have actually really? i have yeah yeah yeah. i have not I have, yeah. what happened yeah what did that look oh, like oh it was it was a uh, it just a a couple that I know that are on complete opposite sides of the political spectrum. Oh, oh. they got into it. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, so, it's, so it's always politics when, you, when it's a fight. Mm-hmm. On, right. It was around election time. And yeah, it was interesting to see. That's kind of embarrassing that they were fighting on social media. Yes. Yeah. Especially because right? people probably knew they were dating. Or right. if they were married, married oh, actually. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. probably even more awkward because one was probably like in one room and the other was in the <laughs> exactly. other room. Exactly. I'm like, what are you doing like, right now? And they probably have people like texting them too, like, look what he said, look what she said. Yeah, and I think I you know. know. Maybe I'm making this way more dramatic <laughs> than it probably was. But You're it, following it, Big Sean's. Yeah. Yeah. In my head, that's what it sounded like. It was <laughs> funny. Flair for drama. But yeah, I think it can get out of hand and like people picking different friends and like you find things about out about people that you didn't really want to know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but so. don't you feel like with social media and like that stuff, like where there's smoke, there's fire. So it's like there had to be something behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably true. Yeah, I, I think yeah. this is preemptive. I think he did something, and he's oh, so you yes. think this is foreshadowing? Yes, I, I think Big Sean did something he shouldn't have done, mm. and he's preempting it by you know. I don't know. See, you and your conspiracy theories yeah, always. I, I but, have a lot, <laughs> but I think it has it has a nice commentary on how people just it becomes viral and nobody even knows what's behind it. So yeah, but lots of cool. Um, 
scenes from Detroit in the video. So that alone is really interesting. And then it ends with this garbage truck full of roses spilling out and kind of like a happier note and the couple gets back together. So cool stuff. Thanks, Big Sean. Uh, So what will they think of next to name after Aretha? We talk about, I feel like this comes up every couple of weeks on the podcast, something else new. So there's been a bill introduced by Michigan Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. She she put it through last Friday to rename a Detroit post office. A post office. No. Uh, I disagree. I think everything should be named after Are you Aretha. kidding? Everything. Really? Yes, yes. She is just the heart and soul of Detroit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just a, I'm just a huge, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I'm kidding. I'm kidding that she's the heart well. and soul. I, I, I'm a huge fan. I think Aretha is incredible. Was incredible. Yes. And I just, I think we should always honor her. I agree. But post office is. It seems, I don't know. It, it seems small well, here's at why, this point. Well, no, it's, it's this is how why it was picked, though, because that's a federal application of her name so so far it's been local right a section of the lodge that uh the former shane park you know venues this is a federal designation so name a mountain after her. put her on mount <laughs> rushmore really or something should. right you know a post office we should it's kind of strange it all. So, i mean i feel like at this point i could still get a post office you know what i mean like i, I don't feel like it's that well, big of an accomplishment now that's a stretch it's like, you know, <laughs> Seth Ressler, he was a podcaster. Here's his post office. I don't know. <laughs> hey. So we'll see what happens. With All it. Dearborn then. girl post office. How, how would you Ooh, feel about that? That would be cool. As long as Honestly, it was in Dearborn. By the time. You could, you could just get a can of spray paint. Just probably add the word girl Dude, to yeah. the Dearborn post right. office. <laughs> That's so real. Yeah. <laughs> but, do, but do people even use post office anymore? I, I don't. <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. <laughs> People my age don't even know how to use the post office. Yeah, how do you, like, how do you get do 20% there? off at Bed Bath & Beyond? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, see, that joke's over my head. Wow. That I comes in the so mail. Old. Do people get mail? Yeah, yeah no. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Okay, how about some concert picks? At DTE, they got a big week this week. So Wednesday, July 31st, uh, Wiz Khalifa, a bunch of other hip-hop artists are coming along with him. Friday at DTE is Chris Stapleton, and Saturday the 3rd is Beck with Cage the Elephant. Uh, also Friday, August 2nd, John Mayer at LCA. That's going to be a great one. Uh, if you don't uh, get a chance to see him, you could go see UB40 at, a, at the Aretha Franklin Amphitheater. Hey. Or there's a free concert uh, sponsored by Chevrolet behind the Rensen on the riverfront. That's Loverboy, a little blast from the past. On Saturday, August 3rd, you can see Brian Ferry at the Fox. Sunday, August 4th, Gary Clark Jr. at Meadowbrook. I'll be at that one. I'm looking forward to that. And then I wanted to tell you about the Sidewalk Festival. So this takes place uh, Thursday night, August 1st, all the way through Saturday, August 3rd, in Detroit's Artist Village. So that's the area around historic old Redford that used to just be pretty derelict and now is a pretty thriving area. Um, business area with lots of cool stuff and it's literally like a big block party meets art festival meets music festival so lots of cool things you can see there lots of interactive art my lessons were sitting out on that lawn in front of Motown. Detroit History Tours. Free Film Festival. Shakespeare in Detroit. Ford Arts Beats and Eats. The Heidelberg Project in Detroit, Michigan. Detroit Grand Prix. Valentine Distilling Company in Ferndale. Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. The Hamtramck Music Fest. Motor City Pride and you're listening. And you're listening to. And you're listening to The Debrief. I listen to The Debrief podcast. The Debrief. Just religiously. The Debrief. It's absolutely amazing. All right, let's talk about the Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge. You don't know about this, do you? You No, I don't. You have to participate. So this is an idea that came to me. I was at uh, a a networking event for the Detroit Podcast Festival. You were part of that this year. I was. We'll get to that. We'll talk about that because you have some exciting news coming out of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was there and I was talking to this guy whose name, unfortunately, I can't remember. So I'm just going to claim this idea as my own. Well, tell, <laughs> tell uh, people what he does, though. Or what well, he he's, does. he's opening a shoe exchange. We've t- Are you into tennis shoe culture, this whole... I, oh, no. But I, you know about it. I know yeah. about Oh, the shoe culture is real. It's you, huge. You, you know boys into who are into oh, this, yes. right? Yes. Oh, yeah. so, all over it. Uh, I, he's opening up a shoe exchange on the Avenue of Fashion. That's there. a great call. Yeah. So so we got to talking and, you know, we were talking about all these things in, in Detroit uh, that are going on and, and the surrounding areas. And I said, you know, even though we talk about all this stuff on the podcast, you know, it still happens that my girlfriend and I suddenly have a free night where we can go out. We've got nothing to do. We're like, let's go out tonight. And then I, my mind just goes blank and I can't think of anything to go do. And I always feel 
lame. <laughs> well, then you're like, I know there was. It's kind of like when you're choosing a movie, right. right? It's like, oh, I know there was 10 I wanted to watch, right. but I can't and think of any of them. The, right, yeah. yes, exactly. So what he said he does is he writes all of these things that he wants to do, you know, he and his wife. Uh, they write them down on popsicle sticks. They put them in a jar. And when they have a free night to go out or a free weekend, they just pull a stick from the jar and then that's where they go. I like it. I, yeah. I did too. I know. Because you don't easy, end up easy. at the same place every single time. So if I'm in your predicament where I'm like, oh, I want to go out, but I don't know what to do. I end up going to the same place. Right. 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 You know, and uh, so so we I bought a bunch of popsicle sticks. I bought 100 popsicle sticks over there at Michael's for like $15. Michael's is expensive. Yeah, I think a little pricey. <laughs> should have just items. eaten a hundred popsicles. I was That's what you say, should have done. Get brain freeze. Totally. <laughs> this sounds way more. Invite fun. friends over and have a popsicle party and then save them. Uh, yeah. So so and within ten minutes we had filled them all out. Like I was surprised how fast we filled them all out. Well, I actually got a chance to use them. Unfortunately, it was under not great circumstances. Yeah. I was supposed to go on vacation last week. Uh, we loaded up the uh, the car. Uh, got up at seven o'clock in the morning. Loaded up the car, and we were going to go to my uh, grand father's in upstate New York. Uh, he's got a house out there. And we got the call. He passed away that yeah, morning. So we didn't sorry. get to see him. Uh, yeah, he was a great guy. That's a story for another podcast. And he was he was quite a bit older, right? I yeah, mean, he yeah. He lived a nice I mean, it was, long life. Yeah, but, yes. still, but, but, condol- but still, condolences to your family. So, you know, we didn't go, you know, yeah. long story short, or at least I postponed the trip and wound up going later in the week. And now all of a sudden we're stuck at home. A staycation. And we're having a staycation. And so we pulled out the jar and we started pulling sticks out. And sure enough, it was great. Like yeah. I've been meaning to go to Cliff Bells. I've never gone to Cliff Bells. I finally made it to Cliff Bells. It was awesome. We went to uh, Club Monarch. Oh, good. Right? Have you know about I this have. Place? I've been a couple of times. Yeah. It's cool, The right? view is great. It's yeah. amazing. So it's a, good. You joined the Cool this, Kids this Club. Room, yes. I'm now in the Cool Kids That's, Club. Yeah. <laughs> Gold Cash Gold, the Rattlesnake Club, like all these places. Yeah, one night you were just eating your way through all these oh, yeah, areas. Did, I was so impressed. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, we just kept so so it was You took over our Instagram for a few days there. there. You go. So here's the thing. We are now let, let's issue a challenge to our listeners. Yes. The Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge. Uh and we want you to, as you hear about stuff on this podcast, as we have guests on, like like yourself, who come on and mention things that maybe we don't know about, and you're like, Oh, that's a cool idea. Write, Write it, down it down on a popsicle stick stick it in the jar and then next time you have a free moment draw a stick out and then take it a step further right let us know Mm -hmm. Uh, either when you're posting on social media twitter instagram something like that use the hashtag detroit popsicle challenge and tag us and tag us uh, the debrief, yep. Yeah. Uh, or you can leave a voicemail. If you just go to our website, there's a tab on the right-hand side, a little orange tab that says leave voicemail. Click it there. Uh, leave a voicemail. Be like, ah, I pulled a popsicle stick. Here's where I want it. Yeah, and tell us what you thought of it. And we'll, we'll play your call back on the podcast. Cool. Cool deal? Call us. The Debrief. All right, let's talk about some of the things that are going on around town. Starting with this, the big thing that's happening uh, in Detroit this week is obviously the Democratic debate happening Tuesday and Wednesday night at the Fox Theater. 20 candidates. They can't even fit them all on one stage. Two nights. Uh, Tuesday night, some of the big players, Mayor Pete, Elizabeth Warren, Beto, uh, Bernie. Uh, Wednesday night, you've got Joe Biden, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, uh, Julian Castro, and... A million other people yeah. who are running that I can't even Lots keep track of, folks. of at this point. And CNN's been running some very flattering stories about Detroit As in the wake of all this. The, the comeback city, and it's it is bringing a nice spotlight to yeah. the city. So, I like it. yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's pretty good. Now, I know you are very politically active. You're you pay attention a lot to politics. I do. Right? Yes, that's I'm, your realm. I'm lucky enough to be able to go actually both nights. How did you wow. get? Well, my I have a plug, and he is 14, and he's my little cousin. So my little cousin right now is interning with Debbie Dingle. Wow. And he was able to – he has friends um, apparently in the Democratic Party, the Michigan Democratic Party. <laughs> Your 14-year-old <laughs> yes, cousin is connected. Is, this is all a true story. And so he, um, he really wanted to go. And so his parents are like, okay, you need to find somebody to go with you because you're 14. You can't go by yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm his favorite cousin. So he – got one ticket and he's like okay if I can't get a second ticket you have to go by yourself because I'm not allowed to go <laughs> so either way I yeah. was going and he ended up getting two tickets and um he is probably more well well versed on politics than most adults is wow uh, I would adults. imagine yeah so yeah. it's very exciting um 
it'll be cool. So I went to the DNC when it was in Philly um, last round. And so it's like kind of it's going to be cool to kind of compare the two, even though they're very different events. But um, it'll be interesting. Um, what did you think of the DNC? Um, so the Democratic Party does this thing where they pander to very rich people. And it, it was very you could just tell that the party as a whole is very disenfranchised from voters. And I think that was one of the main reasons why. Is, is this one Trump. of the events where everybody's, you know, shaking each other's hands, but looking over the shoulder to and see reading name tags and scanning the room? To see yeah. And it's, it's also one of those events, too. Where I went with a, a I was interning in Philly at the time with Teach for America. So um, one of my friends was very politically active and he raised a lot of money for the campaign. And so people, you would, we would go to these mixers and people would have pins and the pins would tell you how much each person oh, raised. Man. Yeah. So it's, it's a very, very elitist environment. It's um, high school with I mean, you would accounts. assume. Exactly. Re exactly. Republican parties, I mean, assume. Oh, uh, anything's like I mean, this. Like yeah, when anything, I was working in yeah. the, the radio industry, you would have events with record labels and, and radio stations and work the and exact like same the thing. And it's like the elite of the elite. Exactly. And, yeah. and you have candidates that this this round that are definitely calling out the Democratic Party for being very um, disenfranchised and yeah. unable to engage voters too. Rightly so. So let me ask something. Uh, when you have a political event like this happening in Detroit and mm -hmm. Dearborn is right next door. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am guessing that Dearborn gets some play. Absolutely. So we la actually it's funny last you say that last week, Bernie Sanders went to my absolute favorite coffee uh, shop, Kahwa House in Dearborn. And Joe Biden went to my favorite burger place, Brome. And they were both in Dearborn the same day. And that the biggest reason why was if you win Wayne County, you win Michigan. Wayne County is the largest yes. county. 13th largest county in the country. And then if you win Dearborn, that's a really good battleground because Dearborn influences outside neighboring communities. And you want to win the Arab American community because it's a very strong community. So that's why both of them came. Um, and it was very interesting, the styles that they came to, where Bernie wrote this really long, elaborate Instagram post about the owner of Kahwa House and talked about, he sat down and talked to him and listened to him talk about his family. And he the, his family can't come from Yemen due to immigration. Mm -hmm. And right now, Biden came and was just like taking pictures and playing with babies and like did that whole political I, stuff. So I was going to ask okay. you, I was going to okay. ask you how you feel about this, because do you feel like this is great because it's, it's dialogue? and it's reaching out and it's you know connecting Shedding with light. the community yeah. or do you feel like this is a photo op yeah. um i think with burn uh, from okay so i only perceived everything from social media but dearborn is amazing because one person posts and like everybody goes or everyone posts and so instagram on Deer in dearborn is very small so like it's just it's crazy mm. so um biden from my perception of biden was he just like ate and just like chilled didn't really do a whole lot of like he was engaging with like some religious figures but then again like if you're engaging with religious figures you're kind of not really talking you're talking to people but you're not necessarily talking to like the community where I feel like and he also went to West Dearborn and he went to like the pretty like burger place where even though the burger place is amazing and it's like my favorite but it wasn't it's the way the place that Bernie went was like the heart of East Dearborn where like people congregate all the time to that coffee shop to like the, that's where like activists go and community members and whatnot. So like the fact that he sat down, the fact that he talked about the Saudi led coalitions in Yemen right now and talked about the reason that the owner had to flee from Yemen and come here was because of things like that and whatnot. It just like kind of showed the, like the dynamic the of it. So, it so had like, a different take. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, and then while you were here, the press, the press is obviously followed here. And you got a little bit of national press, right? We did. We did. So this uh, afternoon, ABC Nightline um, interviewed us about identity, politics, and kind of how we're voting and how we perceive Dearborn to vote and whatnot. So it was wow. really exciting. Yeah. And a really, really, Congratulations. thank you, really fun to do. Um, but it, it's also awesome, too, to be able to, like, advocate for my community in that way and kind of just 
talk about what I've observed and talking to people and then even just my own personal opinions on the, the climate. Do you ever mm-hmm. feel this pressure like you're being asked to speak for the entire Arab Muslim community? Yeah, yeah I was going to ask that too, kind of being the face of a yeah. large group of people. So I think we try to describe it in a way where people... I think people have placed it on us, but at the same time, we just made this platform. So like the platform is for for people to kind of come on and and just say whatever they want and Mm -hmm. speak their truth and speak their voice. But at the same time, like, yeah, there's definitely this, this pressure, even though we've tried so hard to remove it because I don't necessarily, and Rima can say the same thing, want to be the face of Dearborn Girl. We just kind of want yeah. this to be a community-led, driven initiative where the community is able to talk for itself. And it, it's not, it's not, I represent myself at the end of the day and Rima represents herself too. So um, it's, yeah, just trying to not, try not to represent everyone. Right, <laughs> right. right. No, it's, that's wise. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to talk to you again after the debates. I want to get your... I want to hear what you think. Oh, definitely. Yeah, how, I will have how a lot, it all went down. I will have a lot of opinions. Well, especially because okay. I want to I want to hear if it plays differently in the room than it plays on television. Mm. So apparently, okay. So apparently, in the room, you're not allowed to like take pictures or record. But I'm I'm gonna try. You're gonna try. <laughs> Just, you're like you're like the cast you're of the Avengers, rogue. right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, it's going to be interesting, though, too. You're you're right. I, I, I'm i definitely interested to hear that, too, especially because, like, there was some controversy last uh, last time with, like, mic, people's mics. Yes, uh, yes. And then we were t- talking to, uh, I don't remember who I was talking to, t- to today, and they were saying that the moderators, they're probably not going to change. They're going to have them the same, like, both nights, too, which, which will be interesting. Oh, that's probably a good idea, though, yeah. consistency. Yeah. Huh. Uh, let's talk about family photos for a moment. Okay. Well, here, <laughs> yeah. here's why. I mean, first of all, you know, I did eventually make it to my grandfather's. Oh, I bet you saw lots of photos. Uh, yeah. We did because, you know, kind of the, it was a family reunion for yes. all the wrong reasons. Yes, and everybody's exactly. in the house and we're going to my grandfather's house and there are so many photos. Oh. Uh, and so many of them are in formats that are... Obsolete, no. Yeah, difficult to get to. I mean, slides. Like, see, yeah. You're younger. <laughs> yes. She's like, what are you talking about? There are these things called slides. You, you know, if you don't have a projector, you have to hold them up to the window. Ooh. You know, but, but I mean. There'd be an old carousel projector and they'd click through and show right. them on a screen and, and, and with a light. And he's got like, you know, tons of, what do you, you just have a million Instagram photos, right? That is <laughs> literally just like my whole phone. All of my storage is just right. pictures, videos, Snapchats, everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's honestly great though, because there's no memory that goes without documentation goes, left, goes uncaptured <laughs> yeah. I, I was having this discussion with my uncle and he goes i don't take pictures anymore because all all we have are pictures you know and all everybody does is picture you know you ever go out i mean i'm one of those guys you know i, I take pictures of my food when i go to oh, a I restaurant know. I, and, yeah, yeah you know and i've never gone back and looked at a picture of the food that I, I go ate back last like once year. a week I do go back and delete a lot of that stuff. Right, you know. I so use it for certain things and then it's gone. Uh, there's a handful that I care about, but I really People care about People pictures I keep. I, I really care about these photos that, you know, my grandfather has. They're in so his place. precious, so precious. So I feel like it's changing the value of It is. It's one of those things because it's so so much easier to do now. Well, so much of our culture is more throwaway, yeah. Anyway, there are photos of Detroit families that are going to be featured in a three-part PBS series. It's called Family Pictures USA. It's airing uh, August 12th and 13th nationally, but the Detroit Historical Museum did a free screening last week, and they actually partnered with the filmmakers in researching this project. It was part of that big Detroit 67 project that yeah, they did, yeah, and they yeah. serviced a lot of photos, so a lot of them got used here. So uh, it, it's it's just interesting to me because it, you know, photos of something that I've been thinking about lately. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, here are some other things that are going on that you may want to know about. Friday, August 2nd, the Detroit Lions have Family Fest with a special Lions scrimmage. All weekend long, friend of the podcast, Jeff Horst, very funny guy, and Love Esther Navarez uh, are going to be at the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Oh, he, they're doing together. Yeah, they, they're well, because they're, they're yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. They uh, Jeff Horst was on Kevin Hart's Heart of the City, and his career's kind of taken off. He's moved out to LA. He's made the big move, but he is back to headline the Comedy Castle. Uh, also, Friday and Saturday, comedian Zach Martina, first ever guest on this podcast, mm-hmm. is going to be at Big Tommy's in Novi. I bet you didn't know in that downstairs room they do comedy. But
but they do. I didn't. And Zach Martin is very funny. Uh, Saturday, August 3rd, Wendy Williams and friends are going to be at Music Hall. Uh, this is the last weekend. If you want to see Debbie Does Dallas, the musical, <laughs> at the Ringwald Inferno. Are you old enough to know what Debbie Does Dallas is? I have is? no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when we have these youngsters. Wow. <laughs> yes, I know. It's, uh, it, it, it's a porn film that has apparently been turned into, into a, a musical. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> I, I think there are certain it's scenes like the, that didn't make it into the musical. It is, the, is it the uh, bound to go out? I don't know. Was it that one? Like, the, I don't the, know. Yeah, I don't. I I don't actually know that. That would be great. I guess we got to do some research. I I. But there must have been a lot of plot in those early porns if they could turn it into a musical. <laughs> I, know, right? I don't remember musical numbers in this, but. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, last weekend to see Shakespeare's uh, Shakespeare Royal Oaks doing Othello uh, at Star JC Park. I actually Park. do love that play. That's yeah. one of my favorite Shakespeare's. Uh, and then uh, next Wednesday, big deal, the Detroit Improv Festival, which is actually huge. Uh, kicks off. If you go to their website, you can see just dozens and dozens of events that they're doing. So go check that out. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Breathe. All right. There it is. Your first uh, podcast episode with us. Not your first podcast episode. No, she's a pro. I, we can, yeah, we can tell. But uh, mm-hmm. no, thank you for joining us. No, for thank this. you for having me. It's been fun. Uh, hey, a couple of things before we get out of here. We have a mobile app. Go download it. There are extra episodes in there, extra conversations, extra interviews that you can hear. You can also listen to us on your Amazon Echo. Just say, an Alexa, enable the debrief podcast. And who do we have uh, on Friday's show? We've got... Uh, oh, Chef Genevieve Vang. Oh, Bangkok yes. 96. This is... Uh, Thai you, food. You must... It's amazing. So good. If you haven't been, you got to go. She's got a restaurant Agreed. in Dearborn. She uh, does. And Detroit Shipping Company now. Yeah, yeah so. I'm a big fan. And she's got some new things in the works that she's going to tell us about, too. All right. Before we get out of here, we always like to do shout out something locally that we want to shout out. Uh, Becky, you want to start? Sure. Uh, I want to shout out some food, of course. Um, Latito at Joe Bar uh, there in Hazel Park. So uh, same street as Mabel Gray, and then they do frame in the back. But Joe Bar is up front, and they changed their concept a little while ago. And Latito, oh, it just blew my mind. It was so delicious. Everything we got was so yummy. Came out of the kitchen like lightning fast, um, super duper tasty, just wonderful, wonderful flavors reasonable prices and great service. I just had a wonderful experience. So if you like Latin flavors at all, just give it a try. All right. I'm going to do something that I don't normally do for my shout out. I'm going to say not something nice about my podcast co-host. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously, you've been involved uh, with this organization called The Matrix. Uh, you've been on the board. Uh, they have their big fundraising event, 313 uh, in the D is the uh, big event fundraiser, which just happened uh, over the last week. Last Thursday. And you were honored with the Spirit of Detroit Award. Ugh, you're going to make me cry again. So, I was blown away. I was blown away. So, so I didn't tell, know it was coming. I wasn't there because of everything that's going on with my yeah, grandfather. But, that's but okay. uh, tell us about the event and tell us a little bit about well, the sure. Award. So this uh, event started six years ago. So this was our sixth annual and just a really grassroots event. Um, Matrix Human Services, which I am on the board, uh, has this center and it's one of our largest facilities. It's in the Osborne community in in the east side of Detroit, and we serve thousands of people through there. Anything you could think of from basic needs to way on up to just helping people with job training and parenting and a safe place for kids to go after school and you name it. It's just a wonderful community place that really supports the Osborne neighborhood. And so we came up with this party. Just people love to have fun and uh, contribute to families and kids. And, and it's just taken off and people look forward to it every summer. So. We've raised, I'm proud to say, um, just past our six year, $300,000 for the center, which um, impacts a lot of people. So, I mean, that in and of itself is amazing. And then, yeah, we were at the event and all of a sudden we're called up to the stage and everybody on my committee is certainly, I don't do this alone by any means. I, you know, just contribute contribute a, a bit here and there, but we have this tremendous community of people that came together. So there's um, some staff members and volunteers on the committee, and we all received the Spirit of Detroit Award, and uh, from Scott Benson, who's who's on City Council. So it's it's actually a decreed thing that's signed by all the City Council members that's of Detroit. Awesome. And uh, yeah, one of the staff members of Matrix arranged it, and we were all just really honored so well, very cool you didn't have to say that and, so uh, cool. Congrats. but i appreciate it and uh yeah i learned later that even cardi b has a spirited to award 
That is awesome. So there, awesome. I guess that's what I now have in common. With that her. is so cool. <laughs> what about you, yeah. Yasmin? Anybody? I would love to shout out my co-host Rima. She cannot be here today because she is in New York right now. So she's interning with Gary V for the summer. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm super proud of her for that, and then I'm also super proud of her for being my co-host. We just finished the first season, so it's just a very proud day. <laughs> That's well, cool. a great. Congrats. Well, look, thank you so much for uh, joining us for the show. You're thank come you back for having me. Join us tomorrow. Uh, the podcast, again, is Dearborn Girl. People can get it everywhere you get podcasts. Basically. Everywhere. And then we're on YouTube as well. So Nice. Yes. Uh, and if they want to follow you on Instagram? Dearborn.girl. All right. Well, until tomorrow, Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D. Brief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. Hi, Craig Folly here. If you're listening to the Debrief Podcast, well, I've got two things to say to you. One, you have impeccable taste. Two, you care about the community that is Metro Detroit. That's why I think you'd appreciate my daily show, The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit. Every weekday, I tackle the big issues in politics, business, arts and culture, sports. Whatever's on the mind of Detroiters and Michiganders, we will talk about it. It's all open for discussion. And keep this in mind. News doesn't have to be boring. Sure, we talk about serious stories and we have interviews and commentary, but we do it in a way that, if I'm doing my job right, is informative but also entertaining. Check out The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit for news, knowledge, and hopefully some fun tossed in.